Hi guys, Wandersun here. In this video I will teach you how to create a splash screen using Python and Qt Quick. I will teach you how to create a window with the login function, and also a version that after 3 seconds the window will close automatically and open the main window. Before we start don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your like. Here in the home screen of Qt Creator I created a project and added an image and some controls that we created earlier, I will leave the link of these controls in the description. In Windows Explorer we will start by renaming the main.qml file to splash screen and moving to the QML folder. In our main pi file let's change the address to the file we just renamed and move it to the QML folder. In the main window, we will put the width as 380 and height as 580, after that add a rectangle inside our window. I will change the color of this rectangle to a dark color, and an anchoring center it in the window change its width to 360, height to 560. I will add a logo to our splash screen. This image will have a width of 300 and a height of One twenty. The download link is the video description. Center this image horizontally, on top anchor set the value as 45. Rename the ID to logo image and in the rectangle rename the ID to BG. We will import the components of circular progress bar, custom button and also our text field. Just import the folder where they are located relative to the main.qml file. After that it appears in the Qt Creator window, and just click and drag to where we want. Center the circular progress bar and change the color as desired. If you want you can also change the other properties of the progress bar as shown in the video. Let's add a label to our project, but before we need to import Qt controls in version 2.15. Center this label horizontally, change its color to white, size to 16, and I will use the font Sego UI. Copy and paste this label we just created. Change the font size and text as shown in the video. If the controls disappear just click on Edith then go back to the design window. Add a text field. Center horizontally. Change the placeholder text to username or email. Repeat the same process, but in this we will add a property to make this field to receive passwords. Add the echo mode property as text input password. This property is responsible for hiding passwords text. We can run our application and test these fields.
We will now add a new component that will be the button responsible for login. Set its width to 300, height to 40. And center it on the screen. Change the username field ID to text user. The password field ID to text password. And the button to the BTN login ID. Align the login button relative to the bottom of the window. and the other components relative to the components below. See that it is not possible to use anchoring in labels because they are inside the circular component progress bar. Let's move them into the rectangle BG. Done that align the texts as you wish, don't worry about the progress bar below, we will adjust it soon. Change the color of the button to the same color used on the circular progress bar as shown in the video. Change the text, font and text size of the button. We will import a module QT graphical effects in its version 1.15, it will be responsible for adding the drop shadow on the rectangle BG. Import the component as shown in the video, linking the anchoring property and the source to the BG rectangle. Add the offsets with value 0 and color as shown. Put the Z value as 0 and in the rectangle BG put it as 1. This will cause the drop shadow to appear below the rectangle. See that I added a wrong property, correct as shown in the video and run the application again. Now let's start the animation process using the QT Creator Timeline. Start by changing the height of the BG to 360. Add a new timeline, in end frame add the value 3000 in all fields. Set the value of the circular progress bar to 0 and click insert keyframe. Move the timeline to frame 1300, set the time value to 100 and insert the new keyframe. See that when we move the timeline we can see the progress bar in action. 
Set the timeline to 1300, set the opacity to 0 and insert a keyframe. Go to frame 1800, set the opacity to 1 and add a new keyframe. If the keyframe value has gone wrong just change that value manually in the edit keyframe. Copy the first opacity keyframe and paste it at the beginning of the timeline. Now what we are going to do is make all the components appear after the circular progress bar reaches 100% and disappear completely. In frame 1800, set the logo opacity to 0. In frame 2300, place the opacity with the value 1, and don't forget to always add a keyframes. Copy the first keyframe and paste it at the beginning of the timeline as we did earlier. Repeat the same process for all other components as shown in the video. Add opacity as 0 for the first keyframe, always starting with an average of 100 frames in front of the previous component. This will make the components appear in sequence. If you have already used the program called After Effects for video editing this process will be familiar to you. When running our application we can see the components displayed in sequence. Let's add a button to close our splash screen, copy and paste the button we will use to log in, change the text to the letter X, put its width and height with the value 30, and set your anchor as top and right with value 15. Rename the ID to BTN Close. In the OnClose property, we will add a function to close the application. But before I rename the window ID to Splash Screen, then add the Close function responsible for ending the process. When we run the application we see that the button is working correctly when it is clicked. In BG Rectangle we will add a keyframe in frame 1300 in the height property. and then in frame 1900 we will put its height as 560. This will expand the window after the progress bar reaches 100%. Change the animation curve as shown in the video so the rectangle will be expanded smoothly at the end. Our animation process is ready. We will now remove the standard title bar from the application. Make the application background transparent. Let's create another window that will open after the splash screen window is closed.
Let's call this window main.qml and put the properties of the splash screen window that we made earlier. Import the modules as shown in the video. We will also put a dark color in the background color of this window. Let's add two labels to the center of our window. These labels will receive information that will be sent from the splash screen to this window. I will copy and paste the same labels that we used in the previous window to speed up the process. Paste them in the main window and reposition as shown in the video. Now we are going to create an internal function that will check if username and password is compatible, if it is, it will present our new window and close the current window. We will use a JavaScript function to speed it up, if you want you can do this verification using Python as shown in the Qt Quick and Python course. The variable component will create our main.qml component using the qt create component function. And the create object function will give us access to send information to the other window. Use winshow to display the window and visible as false to hide the current window. Let's now add this function that we just created by passing the user and password values to our function. If it works out our window will be displayed correctly. See that everything worked correctly. But we need to change the labels we created in the main window because they are not appearing. They are not showing up because they are looking for anchors in components that do not exist, just delete these parameters and run the application again. With everything working properly I will teach you how to pass values from the splash screen to the main window. Create two properties of type string with the name username and password. Those properties that will receive the values from the splash screen window. We will concatenate these properties to the text of our labels using the plus sign as shown in the video. In the splash screen window we add the username object the name entered by the user, and in password the password that was entered.
I will also link the username to the window title. See that the parameters are being sent correctly. To finish, I will teach you how to create a function that will make the window appear for 3 seconds and after closing and opening the main window. This is useful if you just want to display an image or some information before the application starts. We will use the timer component to run this function as shown in the video. In untriggered we can copy the function we created previously to create the main window and paste it inside. Just change the username and password value first. Change the display time from 300 milliseconds to 3000 milliseconds, so the window will be displayed for 3 seconds before being closed. This was our class today. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel please subscribe and leave your like. Thanks to all Patreon supporters. See you in the next video.